presenting I did when I was in Oxford with Christoph Fraser. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about some uh, work on evolutionary ecology of antibiotic resistance. Um, and the idea that motivates this work is that if we want to have effective interventions against resistance, we need to be able to predict um, the effect that the interventions that we do have on resistance levels. Uh, and for that, we need to understand how these interventions affect the competition between antibiotic resistant and antibiotic sensitive strains. Uh, so in other words, we need to understand the evolutionary ecology of resistance. Um, and I will be uh, presenting you three related stories on this theme. Um, so first, I'm going to be continuing on this theme of coexistence. Uh, and then I'm going to be talking about how uh, some of these coexistence mechanisms relate to patterns of multidrug resistance. Uh, and at the end, I'm going to say a little bit about the types of explanations that we have for patterns of resistance. Do we explain them in terms of selection or in terms of genetic events? Um, so the talk is motivated by uh, trends we see in surveillance data uh, in a lot of bacteria. But the ecology of the models um, uh, is primarily uh, coming from Streptococcus pneumoniae. So for the purposes of the talk, the things that you need to know about strep pneumo is that it is um, a bacterium that uh, infects primarily children uh, with relatively high rates of carriage. But carriage is mainly asymptomatic. So a consequence of that is that the antibiotic exposure that strep pneumo experiences is primarily because of infections with other bacteria. So that's something known as bystander selection. Uh, antibiotic resistance is mostly primary, uh, which means that if you have a resistant infection, it's because you've been infected with a resistant infection. It's quite rare for resistance to involve, uh, evolve de novo during treatment. Um, there is very, very high antigenic diversity. Uh, so there's over 90 known serotypes. Uh, and importantly for this talk, the serotypes have different properties, including variation in how long they're uh, carried for. Um, and I'll be talking a lot about a uh, data set from Myela in uh, Thailand, which is a large longitudinal study of pneumococcal carriage in children. OK, so on to the first part of coexistence. Um, so um, antibiotic resistant and antibiotic sensitive strains are in competition for the same hosts. Um, so intuitively, we wouldn't expect them to coexist. We'd expect uh, the fittest strain to outcompete the other. Uh, so on one hand, antibiotic exposure makes it advantageous to be resistant. But on the other hand, uh, resistance is assumed to carry a fitness cost, which makes it advantageous to be sensitive. So depending on the balance of these two factors, uh, we would expect uh, one of the strains to outcompete the other. So if resistance is advantageous uh, enough to be seen at all, we would eventually expect uh, resistance frequencies to rise uh, to fixation to 100%. Uh, similarly, in the relationship between antibiotic consumption and resistance, we would expect to see this threshold-like behavior, uh, where below some antibiotic consumption, we see no resistance. And then above some antibiotic uh, consumption rate, uh, we see everything resistant. This is not really what we see in the data. Uh, so this is uh, data from the pneumococcus in the United States, showing, showing resistance levels against various antibiotics over the past few decades. Uh, so you can see this um, long-term intermediate uh, frequency of antibiotic resistance. Similarly, oh, um, and similar trends are also seen in other bacteria and at other locations. Similarly, looking at the relationship between antibiotic consumption and resistance, um, uh, we don't see this threshold-like behavior, but we see this um, relatively linear relationship between 
antibiotic consumption and resistance. So these are examples, uh, again, from Streptococcus pneumoniae, uh, from the United States, and from Europe. Uh, and again, similar trends are also observed in other books. Uh, so the question is, what is it that maintains this coexistence? Uh, and I mean, coexistence of different strains is not that unusual. So I mentioned the 90 different serotypes that we see in the pneumococcus. Uh, and a very typical mechanism that might maintain this is uh, strain-specific acquired immunity. So the idea here is that um, if uh, there is strain-specific acquired immunity and you are a high-frequency strain, then there are more people who've seen the same strain, strain before, so fewer susceptible hosts to infect. Uh, this is something known as balancing selection. Um, but the problem uh, with this explanation for the case of resistance is that there is no evidence of resistance-specific immunity. Uh, and Caroline Colline, a while back with collaborators, looked at various ecologically plausible mechanisms uh, and found that uh, none of these uh, replicated these observed patterns of coexistence. Uh, so taking a step back now and um, formalizing this intuition of uh, competitive exclusion with a very simple uh, epidemiological model. So here you are uninfected uh, hosts that can be infected either with the sensitive uh, strain S or the resistant strain R uh, at rate beta, uh, and infections are cleared back uh, at rate mu. Uh, the sensitive strain is subject to an additional uh, clearance rate tau, which is just the population antibiotic consumption rate. Uh, so we're assuming immediate clearance when exposed to antibiotics. Um, and resistance is assumed to have a fitness cost, uh, which can either be expressed uh, in the transmission rate, so as a lower transmission rate, um, or as an increased clearance rate. Um, and just to note, uh, I will be talking about duration of carriage a lot in this talk, uh, which is just one over the clearance rate. Um, so as I mentioned, this uh, model predicts this threshold-like behavior and no coexistence. But cr crucially, the uh, antibiotic consumption rate uh, at which this switch from uh, sensitivity being beneficial to resistance being beneficial, the antibiotic consumption rate at which this switch occurs uh, depends on the clearance rate, so on the duration of carriage. Um, so strains with a low clearance rate, that is a long duration of carriage, are predicted to switch to resistance at a lower rate of antibiotic consumption. And the intuition for this is that if um, you have long episodes of carriage, the probability of being exposed to antibiotics during that episode of carriage is higher than if the length of the episode of carriage is low, um, and therefore it becomes worth paying the fitness cost of resistance at a lower rate of antibiotic consumption. Um, so, um, to formalize this intuition a little bit more, uh, we introduce a second locus to our model, uh, which has two properties. Uh, so one, it affects clearance rates, so it affects duration of carriage. And secondary, it is under some form of balancing selection uh, that maintains the coexistence of these different D-types. Uh, so an example of D-type that I've already introduced is serotype, um, because strain-specific immunity maintains these different serotypes uh, and they affect duration of carriage. But for generality, I'm calling it D-type. Um, but within each D-type, the structure of the competition between antibiotic resistance and antibiotic sensitivity remains the same. Um, so now I extend my model um, by introducing these different D-types uh, and then introducing this um, scaling of the transmission rate um, that depends on the frequency of the D-type. So this is just a modeling trick that mimics uh, some form of balancing selection that ensures that these D-types coexist. Um, so 
These are results from a multi D type model. So each of these bars is one D type. Um, uh, and this is at a particular rate of antibiotic consumption. Uh, so the D types with the lower clearance rate, so the longer duration of carriage at this rate of antibiotic uh, resistant, uh, antibiotic consumption are resistant, and the ones with the shorter uh, duration of carriage are sensitive. So although there's no coexistence within D type, the coexistence of the different D types allows coexistence uh, in the model overall. Um, and then as I increase the rate of antibiotic consumption, progressively more and more of these D-types will uh, become resistant. Uh, so this allows us to replicate um, this linear-ish relationship between antibiotic consumption rate and resistance. So here I'm showing you the European data. Uh, so each of these points is a European country. The black line is a statistical fit to this data, uh, and this is a fit from the model. Uh, so each of these steps represents uh, an additional D-type becoming uh, resistant. So the more D-types I have, the smoother this relationship. Uh, so a prediction we make here is uh, that uh, the duration of carriage of a, a serotype should correlate with its resistance. Uh, and this is what we see in multiple data sets. Uh, so this is uh, from the Myla data set um, showing a positive association between serotype uh, duration of carriage and serotype resistance. Uh, so in summary of the part one, uh, duration of carriage modulates uh, the thickness effect of resistance, which means that variation in duration of carriage can maintain coexistence of antibiotic sensitivity and resistance. Um, so far, uh, I have only talked about uh, variation in duration of carriage between serotypes, uh, and I've shown you that there is um, variation, there is coexistence within serotype. Uh, so this in terms of serotype alone is not a full um, explanation for this coexistence trend. Uh, so there is this problem of what explains uh, within serotype coexistence. Um, so there are multiple possible explanations. So it is no known that serotype is not the only determinant of dur duration of carriage in the pneumococcus. Uh, so serotype is um, responsible for approximately half uh, of heritable variation in duration of carriage, but we just don't know what the other determinants are yet. Uh, then, of course, there's other coexistence mechanisms, like, for example, uh, host population structure, where assortative mixing between um, uh, different host groups that use antibiotics at different rates creates niches for antibiotic sensitivity and resistance. Uh, and then recently, uh, Davies and all have suggested um, this entirely different mechanism uh, that is to do with co-colonization. Okay, so then moving on to uh, the second part of this talk, which is about patterns of multidrug resistance. Um, so there is this trend in surveillance data, which I will be referring to as multidrug resistance overrepresentation. So if the um, if resistance against different antibiotics were distributed independently, then we would expect uh, resistance against both antibiotics A and B to simply be the product of the frequencies of resistance uh, against the individual antibiotics, as shown here on the left. Uh, but what we actually observe is that the probability of having dual resistance uh, is greater than this product, as illustrated on the right. Ooh. So here are some examples uh, from data. So these are four different pugs. Uh, on the y-axis, I'm showing association between resistance. So um, in this metric, zero would correspond to this expectation of um, the frequency of dual resistance being just the product, and one would correspond to the rare resistance only ever appearing in presence of the more common resistance. Uh, and each of these 
uh, points here represents a pair of antibiotics. Uh, so we see this very uh, prevalent trend of um, the uh, two resistances appearing together more often than um, expected from uh, if they were um, individually distributed. Um, and the point that I want to make uh, in this part is that some of the coexistence mechanisms uh, actually predict this trend for free. Uh, so coexistence mechanisms that work in terms of strain structure or host population structure. So if I extract the mechanism that I talked about in the first part of this talk. So essentially what I have is I have this strain structure with, uh, which is maintained by balancing selection, uh, where competition within each of these strains between antibiotic sensitivity and resistance is independent from the other strains, uh, and where the fitness benefit of resistance varies between these different strains. And from a high level of abstraction, um, mechanisms of coexistence that work in terms of population structure uh, have exactly the same mechanism. So assortative uh, mixing between population groups creates these groups, which I'll be calling strata, where competition between antibiotic sensitivity and antibiotic resistance uh, is independent between the strata. Uh, and variation in antibiotic consumption between the groups creates these uh, conditions where uh, resistance is beneficial in one strata and not beneficial in the other strata. Uh, so abstracting further, um, essentially, these coexistence mechanisms require two things. They require stratification of the competition between antibiotic sensitivity and resistance, uh, and they require variation in the fitness benefit of resistance, uh, which could arise from variation in antibiotic exposure, in duration of carriage, or the fitness cost of resistance. Um, and so, of course, this model predicts that resistances will be found uh, where the fitness benefit of the resistance is the highest. So now, if we um, extend this model to multiple antibiotics, and we assume that this variation in the fitness benefit of resistance is correlated between the different antibiotics, uh, then we predict exactly this trend of uh, association between resistances because resistance um, against all of the antibiotics uh, will be likeliest to find, be found uh, in these strata where the fitness benefit of resistance is the highest. Uh, so of course, a crucial assumption here is that this variation be correlated for different antibiotics. Uh, so if the variation in the fitness benefit of resistance arises from variation in duration of carriage, uh, this is a property of the stratum. Uh, so clearly this will be the same for all antibiotics. But if this variation arises from uh, variation in the rate of antibiotic consumption, uh, then we need to make the extra assumption that the variation in consumption uh, is the same for all antibiotics. So the groups that consume one antibiotic at a high rate also consume the other antibiotics at a high rate. Uh, so testing the sensitivity um, to this idea, um, these are results from a um, model where I uh, explicitly have the different groups uh, consuming antibiotics at different rent, uh, rates, uh, and then I vary to which extent um, the variation in rate of antibiotic correlation uh, of consumption is correlated between the different uh, antibiotics. Uh, and not surprisingly, as this correlation in antibiotic consumption decays, uh, so does the association between uh, resistance, resistances, so LD is the same metric that I showed you before. Uh, so zero would be completely independently distributed um, resistances. But crucially, if the variation in the fitness benefit of resistance arises both from variation in antibiotic consumption and duration of carriage, uh, then 
decreasing the correlation in antibiotic consumption uh, decays, but does not completely abolish the association uh, between uh, resistances. Uh, just in terms of empirical support, fully testing this model would require uh, a full understanding of what the different strata are. Uh, and we don't have a clear understanding of this, but so we think that variation in duration of carriage uh, is one of them. Uh, and it is indeed true that uh, the duration of carriage of a strain is predictive of how many antibiotics uh, it is resistant to. Uh, so just to summarize uh, this second part, uh, so I've told you that coexistence mechanisms that work by stratifying competition um, into these independent uh, strata um, predict this trend of MDR overrepresentation. Uh, so this is a, therefore an explanation for MDR overrepresentation that is compatible with stable resistance frequencies, which is interesting because sometimes this trend of MDR overrepresentation is uh, interpreted as evidence that these multidrug resistance strains are outcompeting other strains. Um, and in terms of public health implications, um, this model predicts that resistance, new resistances will emerge in already pan-sensitive uh, backgrounds because that's, sorry, pan-resistant backgrounds because that is where the benefit of resistance is greatest uh, and that changing patterns of prescription is not enough, necessarily enough to combat MDR overrepresentation. Um, so in the last part of this talk, um, I will be talking about the sort of explanations uh, that we give for patterns of resistance. Um, so, so far in the talk, I have been talking about explanations that are in terms of selections. So I've been saying uh, when we observe high frequencies of resistance on one lineage or strain, uh, and low resistance frequencies on another lineage, that's because there is a different selection pressure uh, for resistance between these lineages. Uh, and in this case, that's uh, in the case of this talk, that's often been um, to do with duration of carriage. Uh, and indeed, this idea is supported by a correlation between uh, um, the frequency of resistance and duration of carriage. On the other hand, it is possible to give completely different sorts of explanations for these patterns of resistance. Um, so you could argue that no, the reason that some lineages have a high um, resistance frequency is to do with them being able to re uh, acquire resistance at a higher rate. Um, so in theory, this could be either through mutation or through horizontal gene transfer. We'll be focusing on horizontal gene transfer because that is the primary mechanism of resistance acqu acquisition in Streptococcus pneumoniae. Um, and indeed, so there is a correlation between um, a lineage having a high resistance frequency and that lineage having a high rate of horizontal gene transfer. Uh, so we have these two possible uh, causal mechanisms for antibiotic resistance, uh, which are both uh, supported by positive associations in the data. What complicates this story a little bit is that there is also a correlation between duration of carriage and horizontal gene transfer frequencies. So the idea uh, here is that um, strains that have high, longer durations of carriage are more likely to encounter lots of co-colonizers and therefore have more opportunities uh, for horizontal gene transfer. Uh, so the presence of this third correlation introduces the possibility of mediation or confounding. So it might be that the association between resistance and horizontal gene transfer is causal, but the association between duration and resistance is not actually causal, but mediated through horizontal gene transfer. Conversely, it's also possible uh, that 
course, the correlation between duration carriage and resistance is real, uh, but the association between resistance and horizontal gene transfer uh, is uh, mediated through this common cause of duration of carriage. So in an attempt to untangle where um, the causal associations lie, uh, we perform uh, an analysis where we adjust for the possible confounding variable, um, with the idea being that if that variable is truly a confounder or a common cause, uh, then this uh, spurious association should not be observed. Uh, so we do this in the Myla dataset. Um, and here, um, on the y axis, on the x-axis, I'm showing uh, the things that we're interested in, so the potential predictors, uh, duration, and horizontal gene transfer rate. So we measured uh, horizontal gene transfer through these two measures. I don't have the time to go into details, but briefly, uh, HR measures the pickup of small bits of DNA, whereas the GM measures gene movement, so the movement of uh, entire genes through, for example, transposons. Uh, and on the y-axis, I'm showing um, association with resistance multiplicity, uh, so the number of antibiotics a particular strain is resistant to. Um, uh, and for each of these correlations, the pink is the unadjusted correlation, uh, and then the other color colors are um, adjusting for uh, the other potential um, confounding variables. So the main takeaway from this is that we see a robust association between duration of carriage uh, and resistance. Uh, we see no association between gene movement and resistance. And then we see this sort of weak um, correlation with horizontal, uh, with HR, uh, which weakens further when we adjust for duration. So the takeaway from uh, this is that the picture of, of resistance evolution that emerges is that, sure, um, the rate of horizontal gene transfer um, is important in determining how quickly a strain will be able to pick up a new resistance determinant, uh, but the eventual equilibrium frequency that uh, this resistance will reach is not dependent on the um, horizontal gene transfer rate and is better explained in terms of um, selective pressures. Uh, so as an overall summary, I've told you three stories. Um, firstly, that Duration of carriage modulates the fitness effect of resistance, uh, so variation in duration of carriage can maintain coexistence of antibiotic sensitivity and resistance. Um, secondly, that coexistence mechanisms with that structure, so variation in the fitness uh, effect of resistance, uh, are um, also uh, predictors of this high frequencies of multidrug resistance. Uh, and in the long term, patterns of uh, resistance are better explained uh, by these selection processes uh, than um, histories of genetic events. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, end by thanking uh, the collaborators in the, on this work and also the organizers for the invitation. Thank you very much.